If you're like me and you've worked on a lot of VRV3, but you've never really talked to anybody to ask the question as to what the heck this giant cylinder is on the right-hand side of most VRV3 equipment. You see, this giant tank is not actually an accumulator. You'll notice here a lot of these small lines that are attached to it. And obviously, the heat exchanger has been removed, so we can actually see it close up. But this is what they would call a liquid receiver or even a liquid refrigerant storage tank for VRV3. VRV3 had the ability to actually pull refrigerant out of the system and stack it in a cylinder like this and pull from it at any given time. Remember that a 14-ton module was rated for 14 tons of capacity. Well, what happens when a 1-ton or a 9,000 B2 unit is calling for cooling? Are you going to circulate 14 tons of refrigerant through the system? No, most likely not. What you would do instead is stack that liquid in a receiver like this. Now, VRV4, they got away with this, and they didn't work with a bunch of solenoid valves here at the bottom right-hand side. And instead, they put the liquid receiver where all liquid in the system would flow through the liquid receiver to stack it. Here is the beauty of it and how it works. With VRV3, we had the ability to purge the top of the tank, right? This is the top of the tank. You would purge the gas out down into the suction line removing any vapor at the top of the tank while you also stack liquid um, right here at the top as well. So on one side, the right hand side, you're going to see that you come up, go over, and you actually stack liquid here in the actual tank. It would trickle it in on the top, the solenoid at the bottom would be closed, we'd purge the vapor off the top, the liquid would stack up at the bottom in this tank. Well, what happens when I need to pull it back out again? Well, they would close this, they would again purge right out the top of the vapor, or the other side of that, push high pressure in the top, open the bottom and pull any liquid or oil that's out of the bottom of this and feed it back into and trickle it through a capillary tube back in the suction line. So VRV3 was constantly known for adding and removing charge on the system as needed based upon demand, capacity, well, and really, let's be honest, however it felt that day. But the problem with this is, and not many people come across it out in the field, is when these solenoid valves fail or there's deals with contamination on some of these capillary tubes, there is some certain scenarios where this will actually stack liquid refrigerant and not charge it back into the system. It's those calls you go to where the system is low on charge, you leak check it, you don't find a leak, you add charge back to it, and it's low on charge again. And you go back a third time, leak check it a third time, and come to find out you add charge and now it stops having a problem. But then the problem is, is that come shoulder season or any other season throughout the year, you find that it's randomly becoming overcharged. Something you want to investigate, look into VRV3, but that's what it is. See you guys on the next one.